I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his deep calls. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway Oh, I'd rather I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords Today, I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. For this broadcast of A Fresh Start, you are going to hear part of the first sermon my dad preached the following Sunday after he left a successful pastor in November 2008 and stepped out in faith to form what is now Back to the Basics Ministries and to begin airing A Fresh Start TV program the first week of November 2009. The title of the message is When God Says Go and is centered on the life of Jonah. You will hear the disastrous results of what happens when God says go and you don't go. But our God is a God of second chances and so much more. And you will also hear the blessings that come when God says go, and you go. On this broadcast, you will hear one part of the three parts of the message, which are shown over three programs. Been so safe. You see, I'm saying, folks, sometimes we got to be careful who we're with. If they're in disobedience, if God has said go to them and they say no, be very cautious. God will deal with them. He's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. I believe he gives us every chance that, that he can, but he will get our attention. And sometimes, if you're living in disobedience, you've said no when God says go. If other people are around you and God deals with you, it can have an effect upon them. Well, fourth thing, when God says go and you say no, notice what happens after the men threw Jonah overboard and again it was the mercy of God verse 17 now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah 
And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then going into chapter 2, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly, and he said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and you heard my voice. For you had cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods surrounded me about, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. He was as good as a dead man. He was still alive. It was total darkness where he was. And when God says go and you say no, there are dark, difficult, disturbing, and distressful days awaiting you. And even though you may have brief times of victory, your life basically feels like a life of defeat. God doesn't want us to live like that. I remember when we started singing Victory in Jesus a few years ago, it wasn't in the, red, or the last Baptist hymnal that was around, the 63 that was around for so long, and then the next one, Victory in Jesus was there. And it, it was an old song, but it was like a new song because we hadn't sung it much. And I just tell you, that's what God wants us to have. Little television program we've done, I close it out every week by saying, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God wants us to live in victory. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. But the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jonah got the mercy of God again when that fish swallowed him. But it's not like we see in commercials, there's a big hollow room there. No, he was about as, it was about as tight inside with all the organs of that fish that it could be. He was there. He couldn't turn. He couldn't do much of anything but think during that time. And you know, when God says go and you say no, because I've been there a few times, <laughs> there are dark days, disturbing days. You know, things come along and you say, Lord, I know I really deserve that. I'm getting what I deserve. Matter of fact, you're not being as hard on me as you could be. And in the belly of the fish, that's where Jonah got right with God. Now we're going to get to the good part here as we'll close out. But when God says go and you say no. You know, there are a lot of people who really don't have a relationship with the Lord who come to churches and kind of marginal in their membership. But really this is a message tonight for, for you folks. The ones who come to church about every time there's something going on and you come for the right reasons but we need to be very cautious in our lives I mean Jonah it, there must have been something about him because see Nineveh was probably about as worse a place as a Hebrew preacher could go they they didn't like each other they were enemies and for God to tell Jonah you're the one preacher right now who I want to go to Nineveh and preach Jonah must have been a pretty powerful, influential man. Now, God can call anybody at any time and use us, but there must have been something about Jonah while God said, you're the man for this job. And Jonah did it. And you see, that's how we can be sometimes. Something that's really, to us, it may not be that major, but it is major to God sometimes. Those little things that he can ask us to do that we ought to do for him sometimes. Oh, Lord, I, I, I don't know. Not today. Well, I like this second part. When God says go and you say no, but when God says go and you say let's go. You know, the book of Jonah is the book of starting over again. Chapter 1, he's running away from God. Chapter 2, he's returning again to God. Because that's where he got right during that dark, distressing, disturbing time of his life. That's what it took with Jonah for him to get right. But he did. And I'm thankful we have a God of the second chance. And we have a God of the third chance and fourth chance and even the 24th chance. But there's always in between there when we say no initially, there's going to be a price to pay. And there's some things that we can miss out on. But in chapter 3, God said, go, and Jonah said, let's go. And in chapter 3 is one of the greatest revivals that ever occurred 
I believe in the history of the world. At least 120,000 people were in that city. It wasn't, the, the preaching wasn't expository. I went to a seminary where they want you to preach expositorily. You go through books verse by verse, and I try to do that. But I've told folks, man, I'd love to preach a sermon like Jonah preached. Yet 40 days and none of us shall be overthrown. Yet 40 days and none of us shall be overthrown. There's, there are more to it probably. But that was the basic message. Nineveh, except you repent, God is going to deal with you. The Bible tells us there that God saw their works. Verse 10, the people repented and with fasting. They got their hearts right with God and he saw what they did and God spared them. When God says, go, let's go. And when you do, you can be sure of this. Number one, you have all the authority and power of God necessary to accomplish his desire for you. You may think, Lord, I can't do it. He, he, you can do it if God says go. He will equip you. He'll give you the ability. He may have already done it. There may be something in you you haven't done for years, but you thought, Lord, I've let that lie dormant a long time. It's time to get going again for your glory and honor. Number two, when God says no and you say let's go, there's nothing that can deter you from fulfilling what he has determined for you to do for his glory. I try to read through the Bible every, every year. And just this morning I, I got through, um, I was reading Acts. Read through all the other chapters of the Bible this year and got to Acts and got to that part there where Paul wanted to be able to go and preach to Caesar. That was kind of a secret goal in his life, but it became very known to us that he said, if God wants to imprison me, if God wants to take my life, whatever God wants to do, I want to preach everywhere I can. And Caesar would have been the most powerful man in the world at that time. And Paul allowed himself to stay imprisoned so that he could go preach to Caesar. But it says there in that passage there in chapter 27 of Acts, when a storm came upon them, it was a little different. Paul had not said no and gone down below deck. Paul had said yes. And as a result of Paul saying yes, all 276 people on that ship most who would be pagans, all of them were spared. Their lives were spared because the man of God stayed true as a man of God. And one of the things that he told them, he said, I want you men to eat. We're going to be shipwrecked tomorrow. But if you stay with the ship, God's going to spare us all. I want you to take courage for this very night. An angel of the Lord stood with me and said, Paul, you're going to testify before Caesar. Amen. Boy, isn't that powerful to think. The kind of storm, the kind of shipwreck that they had where so many times scores of lives can be lost. Everyone was spared. Because you see, there's nothing that can deter you from fulfilling what God has determined for you to do to his glory. Number three, it opens up doors of opportunities and blessings you may never have again, or at least to the, to the degree that it's initially offered. I was uh, sharing with Mike a story, and one thing about Brother Boyd, of course he was Mike and I was Bobby, you know, when we were younger. He had a vision that a lot of uh, younger pastors didn't have at the time. There was an area of Shelby County where new subdivisions were going in. And Mike and I would sit there and talk about this all the time. He and Sandy had bought a home out in that area. And it was really one of those that we, he and I had talked about having a church where he'd preach one service at Boulevard and then go out there and preach another because there are a lot of young families that are gonna be moving in out there. Bottom line, we wanted to reach people for Christ. And all these homes and these young families that were going in, but there was no really, no church out there that, uh, that was before we called them contemporary or whatever, but no church that really had young ministers like Boulevard did who could relate with a lot of those folks. 
I won't give you all the details. I'd probably mess it up. But there was a piece of property. Mike and I drove out there and looked at it one day. Perfect spot for a new church. Matter of fact, as we were talking about the financing that compared to what y'all have just done here in your renovations, what was being asked for there, just several hundred thousand dollars, wasn't much compared to what you've done here. But about 75% of that, Mike had a range where the, it was already covered. Even the man who was building the subdivision was willing to kick in $100,000 or so because he thought a church in that subdivision would be a drawing factor. But you see, at that time, as we tried to present it, there was a banquet at the church and all. The people just didn't quite catch the vision at that point. And I'm thankful Sometimes when you're in your 30s and you're young in the ministry, you think you know a lot more than when you're 54 or 57, <laughs> you know, haven't been around for 20-something years. But we never brought that to a vote at the church because, as Mike, we were talking tonight, we didn't want to divide the church. We didn't want people all of a sudden, well, I want the church to stay in this location or I want to go to the new church. But I do believe this. That was a missed door of opportunity and blessings that even though a couple of other churches have moved into that area and done well, I just think sometimes, what would have happened? How many people could have been reached had we gone and started that other campus of our church? Well, we don't know, do we? When there's a man of God who spends time with God and prays, I've learned this because I haven't always been the pastor of a church. I've been on staff. I've been a lay person. When I believe that the man of God who's leading our church, God's given him a vision, I want to help him fulfill it. I may not agree with him about everything, but I want to think, if he spends time in prayer and God's lay that upon his heart, let's go for it. So when God says go, or go, let's go. By the way, 57 and a half years of age, resigned my church about two weeks ago. Church was very nice to us, had a great reception this last Sunday night and all. But you know what? There's something happening here tonight that's a great door of opportunity. You're getting to preach to you. <laughs> I may never have had the opportunity to preach at Wallace Memorial Baptist Church. If I had not, God said, go. And I said, okay, Lord, let's go. I love the church I was pastoring. I was proud to be the pastor of that church, planned to stay there the rest of my life. Had our best year numerically as far as some things were concerned. But Michael will tell you, when we were younger, there's always churches that you knew of, and you always thought, wow, I'd love to preach at that church someday. And when I was in seminary, I had a missions course, and I read the book on Bill Wallace. He was my hero as a missionary, and I've known about Wallace Memorial Baptist Church for a long time, one of the top churches always in the state of Tennessee, even in the Southern Baptist Convention when it comes to cooperative program giving, when it comes to the Lottie Moon and all those other offerings, and known about this church. And, you know, when you're a young preacher, even when you're a 57-year-old preacher, boy, you dream. I'd love to preach at that church someday, but I won't tell you. God said go. If I'd said no, I don't know that I'd ever have had the privilege to preach to you folks tonight. And this message for all eternity may not have made much difference on your life, but I think somebody will be helped tonight. God gave me a special message for me that he said, I want you to preach it this Sunday night to the folks at Wallace Memorial Baptist Church. So you see, when God says go and you say no, you're living in disobedience and to deserve the judgment of God. The only way to go is down and you're either disabled or destroy your personal testimony for Christ. Your disobedience either directly or indirectly has a negative impact upon others and can even endanger them and their dark, difficult, disturbing, and distressful days ahead of you. But when God says go and you say let's go, you have all the authority and power.
power of God necessary to accomplish his desire for you. There's nothing that can deter you from fulfilling what he has determined for you to do for his glory. It opens up doors of opportunity and blessings you may never have again, or at least to the degree you have it when initially offered. And as you delight yourself in the Lord and depend upon him to give you the desires of your heart, this is the great part about it. Even when you may have said no in the past, <coughs> but you confess and repent of your disobedience, God will deliver you. Notice that Jonah repented to God. And verse 10 of chapter 2 says, The Lord spoke unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. And then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. He said, Go. And Jonah said, Let's go. So we come to this time of invitation tonight. I don't know how God's dealing with you. There may be somebody here, and when you're in the ministry a long time, you get surprised sometimes that people have been struggling even with their own salvation, doubting, not sure sometimes whether they're saved or not. I would invite you tonight, if you aren't certain, this time of invitation, give your heart to Christ. But then you may be here, and God said go, and you've kind of been resisting it a little bit. Don't resist it any longer. You may need to just come pray. I'll be happy to pray with you. Just uh, however God leads you, one of your ministers, just go to him in prayer and say, God's been speaking to me, and I want to be totally open to his will for my life. God said go, and I want to go. But I am so thankful tonight for the grace and the mercy of God. And I'm going to pray. And you respond during this time of invitation as the Lord leads you. Our Heavenly Father, we count it a privilege to be able to join here together tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful spirit that uh, we've been a part of. What an encouragement the people here tonight have been to our family. Lord, I pray for somebody who's here tonight you're speaking to, that they'll be attentive their spiritual ears will be tuned to what you're saying to them. For anyone whom you would have to respond tonight, they'll be faithful to do so. To the glory and honor of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Lord, help me walk another mile, just one more mile. I'm tired of walking all alone. And Lord, help me smile another smile, just one more smile. I know I just can't make it on my own. I never thought I needed help before I thought that I could get by by myself And now I know I just can't take it anymore With a humble heart on bended knees, I'm begging you, please, Lord, help me. Come down from your golden throne to me, Lord, lowly me. I need to feel the touch of your tender hand. Remove the chains of darkness to let me see, Lord, let me keep 
just where I fit into your master plan. I never thought I needed help before. I thought that I could get by by myself. And now I know I just can't take it anymore. With a humble heart on bended knees, I'm begging you please, Lord help me. With a humble heart on bended knees, I'm begging you please, Lord help. Many Christians are living in a state of defeat, depression, discontent, and discouragement because they do not have a knowledge or proper understanding of divine discipline from God. An awareness and understanding of divine discipline will spiritually revive, renew, and refresh the lives of Christians who are not living daily in the joy of the Lord. If this statement is true of you, then I encourage you to get the book Divine Disciplines by Dr. Bobby Mullins, my dad. It's available at Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble. Be sure to get your copy today. that we can now evangelize the world with what I have in my hand right here, this cell phone, live and on demand through the Creative Christian Network through which this program airs, A Fresh Start, and some other wonderful programs. So the information is there on the screen how you can make contact. And boy, I tell you, it's an exciting day how we can get the gospel message this way throughout the entire world.